Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful, soft landscape painting with maybe the sun kind of burning through some of the trees. Of course, if you're enjoying these, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. Let's get started. We'll start off today with our two-inch brush and a nice soft peach color. You see, I just have all my, my sort of nice sunset colors work together here. A little bit random, and that's okay. I'm doing this before I get to, to doing any sketch work. It's a little lighter bit in there, and that's because I just want to make sure I kind of do more than I want and then when I sketch and I'll kind of figure out where I want my trees to go around this. Remember we want, you know, the light to come burning through and I put just from here to here a little bit of clear gel medium and touch of white and that's good. It's nice and kind of feels sticky so that's good. Makes the, makes the painting experience a little easier. Now as you can see I did just a little bit of sketching and then a very faint, very faint mountain. Mostly just a sketch and then I blended the sketch in and that was all I needed. So now I've got my three quarter brush, basically just white, tinted with a little yellow just for fun. Right up here. Let's go ahead and work on our sun. So I see a little tree silhouette and I want that sun right here. So I'm going to place it in. It'll mix with the color that we have down. It's not necessarily the best thing in the world, but as long as it doesn't do it too much, that's fine because I want this area super bright. Ordinarily, it doesn't make any difference at all, but I do want this area bright, so I'll give it another coat here, maybe a little thicker. Okay. And I'm going to feather this out into the tree. I'll show you why in just two seconds. <laughs> there we go. Let this fade up, this white. Good. Yep, that's it. Now it can mix. Now if it mixes, it's all good. It doesn't matter. Just that, just that spot in here. And I'll show you how we make that glow, because you see it's really kind of flat at, at this moment, but let's, let's make it glow here. First, I'm just gonna blend it. And we actually really make it look bright by putting the leaves of the tree around it. Now I'm working just a few of these little leaves around the sunlight area, and then I just squished a little color in and around, because I know a lot of this is actually gonna get covered, but I just wanted to kind of remind us that we are gonna have some light back here as well. Anyways, right here is where I want to look at. So I've got all that stuff in there. Still is not glowing. Let's see if we can make it glow. I went ahead and just took a second to mix up some color. Let's start with, uh, let's start with this one right over here. I don't know what it is. It's just a mushy mass of green and gray and a little uh, yellow every once in a while. So here we go. Let's see what this does for us. That's not a bad tone, actually. I'm going to start now on this side of the tree and very simply work out. I have a little more paint down on this canvas than I would normally. What that's going to do is soften all these colors and make them kind of chalky, which is okay because we want it to look like it's like the sun is kind of burning through. And you know how the sun does when it burns through trees. It kind of makes them look uh, washed out. So that's what this will do, having that little extra bit of paint up here. It will make it kind of feel washed out. Good. Now, if, if we sort of do this right, <laughs> we can make this thing start to glow really soon. I'm thinking now, it looks like we need a little more red. I'm gonna go back to my orange color up here. Let's just see what this does for us. I'm gonna sneak this red up and around. Yes, that, that's a good transition color. Very, very good. We may need to, you know, at the end of the painting, make this a little brighter and, and a little like more stand out. But, you know, for now, we'll just sort of do our best and then the end of the painting when everything else is in we'll make a choice as to how far we want to go with this okay good so I'm gonna just continue I've got mine now I got my brown which does have a lot of red in it I'm gonna play with green in this painting normally in sunsets I don't like a lot of green I'm gonna play with the green colors today I do want just a little not a lot not a lot but just a little so anyways I'm gonna work all these colors together this should make the tree glow I want it to be very much silhouetted back here against this sun. Now I'm gonna spend just a couple minutes up here dropping in, well, a lot of background color. I think it's just about that time. Of course, I did a little sketch because I don't wanna put the wrong color in the wrong spot. That would be kind of sad. <laughs> sad because we'd have to, we'd have to take a lot of time and kind of straighten it out by wiping it with a paper towel, which I've had to do in the past. And it's not the end of the world, but if you know if you can plan around it and sort of make your life easier, then you should. Don't, don't try to paint hard. Try to make it as easy as possible because you're gonna have a better time. You'll have more success. And that's kind of the point, right? We wanna have success and we don't want it to be difficult. There, we wanna we want have as much fun as possible while we do this because 
boy, if you kind of set yourself up and you know, you just take your time, don't rush things, you can have a lot of success. Make sure you build in a lot of variation in color. It takes a little extra time. It's worth every single second you're gonna put into it. Now, this is a straight line and I don't like that, but I'm gonna build up bushes, so I don't wanna cover this with dark yet. I wanna figure out where my bushes are and I'll, I'll work the dark into the bush, but it's just kind of a side note for you. It's not important. Because of course we're painting in oil, this isn't gonna dry, we won't leave a hard edge, so it's all good. You can kind of do things like that. Okay, right over here, because I know what I'm doing, because I sketched, I'm gonna paint in some grass. Just the underpainting for grass. I like to do the underpainting for grass fairly light when it's in the background like this, and I know it's gonna be very vibrant. Good, a little, little bit more on the orange side. That'll help tie it in with the painting. Your colors must be tied together. Now I went ahead and just started playing around with a little bit of color. So I put some green and yellow on top, and then a soft orange, kind of a tan color on the bottom. Now, that was really pretty easy. The more interesting part is coming in here with little slices of light and just popping this color out. And that just, just kind of gives it a little silver lining, a little, little bit similar to kind of, you know, how this feels. Very bright, almost backlit. So I, I want to be careful that we don't get this, oh, don't get this a little overdone, which you could do. So let's sort of do that. And then I'm thinking maybe some more orange color, something a little lighter. Yeah, there we go. There, you can put a little red into it just to kind of make it feel, you know, stick with the rest of the painting. I think we should do, oh yeah, that's it. Oh, that's super, super fun. Okay. And then right up on top, yep, there you go. And this is grass, so we should probably take it and blend it into the background just a bit. Now we're gonna go ahead and work on these little trees back here. I just put a little bit more dark in, played around with the rocks, you know, I kind of made, kind of turned the dirt into a little bit of a rock down here. So there was a transition, so it wasn't just all dirt all the time. That's kind of cool. So anyways, now I'm just gonna use my filbert brush here, using the filbert brush to, to really just, I don't know, kind of shape a couple of these little bushes. I don't want to go crazy. I don't want them to just like be super bright. Also, I'm not looking for individual little mushrooms up here. I want, you know, a nice little clumpy effect. I would ordinarily like a detail round, but I think that that'll give us too big of an effect. I think what might be better is, is the filbert for back here. And plus it's a little faster, so that's an extra bonus. Good. Another fun thing to do is to take a little more of our gold, like from the tree over here, and just touch the edges with that gold. See how that brightens them up a little? So kind of more green in the center, and then where it's really being lit directly from the sky. That's where we have this gold, and that's pretty. Bring that in a little. I, I like that. <laughs> so anyways, we're gonna just go around and kind of paint in some of these bushes and, and get them highlighted. Now I spent just a few more minutes working on, you know, some rocks down here. Just kind of getting a place to put our little waterfall, and that's what I thought we would do next. It looks like it's about time to do our waterfall, which of course will be a lot of fun. I love these sort of things, so just kind of let it splash down using a beautiful soft golden color. You see, when you do sunsets, <laughs> when you do sunset paintings, you must, and it's not something that you should do, you must have all your colors with the very warm sunset, you know, matching the warm sunset colors of the sky. If you don't do that very simple step, you're not gonna be overly happy with it because it's just not ever gonna look natural. And if you're wondering why you would do that tonight, at sunset, go out and look at the landscape. Don't look up at the sky, look at the landscape. And you will see why you have to match all the colors. Everything takes on a, a very beautiful, bright, you know, cast of whatever the sky is doing. It's really fun. There, so anyways, gotta make, make sure you got that right in your painting. There. Now let's go ahead and just highlight these evergreens up here. I'm using the detail round brush and I was having a lot of fun in the foreground. I just thought, eh, time to kind of change and do something up here. There, and I really like, like the idea of getting some of this soft, beautiful sunlight out here on these, on these evergreen trees. You see, I, I already started kind of with the evergreens back here, but it's very simple. I did that very softly. Now this, I'm gonna do a little more, a little more vibrant. 
There. Speaking of vibrant, a little, little red won't hurt. <laughs> Watch this. Now you might be wondering why we're painting an evergreen in, you know, almost like an autumn color. It's because of that sun. You've got to make sure that the colors work together. It's being lit by the orange sun right now. So that doesn't mean that we can't have any green, but it needs to be limited and it needs to be on the inside of the tree. There's some green that's going in kind of kind of in the middle and then on the left as well. You can have a little, not a ton. You can even have a blue shadow or a purple shadow even better. There. Yeah, a little bit of green is okay. <laughs> it's almost kind of nice to have a little green in there. Of course, you can do a sunset without green at all. There. Just depends on what you want to do. Just be careful with it. Don't go vibrant green on the right-hand edge. That would be a little weird. There. Now let's go ahead and highlight down here a few of these little rocks. I think this will be fun. Make the painting really pop. It's important that you don't just line up all the rocks in a row. I know that's easy to do, very easy sometimes to, to line stuff in a row. So try not to do that. But if you do it, there's an easy solution. You can either come in with dark and just break them up, or it's possible you can usually just, you know, make one of them bigger or something. So no worries, but just keep an eye on that. And the way, the best way to check to see if you're getting any symmetrical patterns when you paint rocks or anything else, stand back a few feet, take a good look at it for a couple minutes. Make sure nothing weird's happening. <laughs> you always want to do that many times throughout the painting. In fact, I do every so often and I stand back I take a good look at it. Just make sure we're on the right track, because otherwise there's just no telling. You can't see it up this, this close. Now I'm going to go ahead and drop in just a couple of little sticks over here. Kind of these little, I don't know, they're like bushes kind of growing out of the, growing out of the grass here. And I, I like that. It just adds one more layer that we didn't have a minute ago. So we'll just sort of do this. It'll be fun. There, I'm going to, see I'm doing the, you know, the brush with light and dark. We do that every once in a while. It kind of makes a line very easily. A line that has highlight and shadow all at once without having to go back and add anything else to the branch, which is great. Good for fences and all sorts of other things. There, see that? <laughs> fun, fun, fun. I like that. Okay, I'm going to, I don't know, grab something here that looks like a, a purpley gray color. And I'm going to sneak a couple of purple leaves on. What am I doing? <laughs> Yikes, I'm not too sure. I just feel like I want to break up the color a little. And maybe this is like some sort of a flowering, I don't know. I'm not even going to try to explain it. I just, and they're subtle, so maybe, you know, they just add a little extra color. There, it's just some sort of a flowering bush or something that has kind of purpley, purpley leaves. And of course we'll integrate some uh, green ones around so they don't just look weird. That's probably enough. Okay, let's get some green. But in this case, green isn't always green. It's more of a gold. So let's get some gold leaves in and around. So yeah, it looks like a flowering bush. There. One of the last things we're gonna do to this painting is, well, sort of throw in some beautiful flowers here in the, de in the, in the background. <laughs> and that will help make a lot of detail. I like that. It kind of brings your eye in toward the foreground a little more because the background's really interesting. So I wanna come, I want you to look at the foreground too. So there you go. Those are flowers up on there. And you know, you're just, I'm just gonna look around and kind of figure out where they need to be and, and pop them in. I won't overthink this too much. Okay. And then, you know, there's also the possibility of doing, well, what looks like little vertical, uh, I don't know, vertical plants that might be really cool. There we go. So I'm just gonna try to get in some, some extra detail in order to bring your eye in toward the foreground. Balance out the interesting background. All right, well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun, I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching.